I'll get that. All right, uh, I want to be down. Um, so like I said, appropriation is an ethical question, uh, which requires ethical presumptions. It includes it's wrong to objectify individuals, it's unethical to dictate someone else's narrative, um, and I would also uh, add, more recently, there's been a lot of con uh, questions about gentrification and art washing uh, and, and that sort of conversation. So I would also add that it's wrong to monetize someone's culture in a way that doesn't benefit them. Um, because that's happening in a lot of displacement and gentrification conversations right now. Chinatown's popping. It's just like what they did to Soho in the 90s and 2000s. You know, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't know. Uh, it was low rent area, artists moved in, fashion culture moved in, bougie people moved in, and now no one lives there. Right? That's the cycle everywhere. Um, so I would add monetization of a culture without finding some way to tie to it is part of that. Um, so the fundamental question, right? The answer to that question uh, is the answer to this question. Can we enter another culture without objectifying it? And if so, what does that look like? What does it look like uh, to go into something? Um, what are the models for that? Uh, so, okay. How are we doing on time? What's the time with them? I have no idea. I don't have a clock up. Good, 11.37. You're good. All right, so we got like 20 minutes. You can take as much time as you want. Nothing else is in this room. Okay, well, I mean, these good people got things to do with their lives. This can't be very thinking about affiliated with me. Um, right, okay, so the fundamental question, right? How do we do this? How do we do this? Uh, I'd like to think. Okay, so um, I think this, this scholar's name is Vijay Prasad. Uh, Prashad. Uh, he's got this book. <clears throat> I might be conflating two books, but uh, I think it's called Everybody Was Kung Fu Fighting. Uh, and it's about the interface between uh, actually not even black America, but it's about the interface between blackness and Asianness. Uh, he points out the fact that ganja is actually a term that came to Jamaica from Hindi. Um, he points out that, um, so he opposes neoliberal multiculturalism by saying that what we actually need is polyculturalism, um, right? So multiculturalism means, oh, we've got diversity at the table. There's different cultures sitting alongside each other, uh, which again actually winds up playing into white supremacy or playing into white normativity. Because then what it happens is it says, oh, look, we got one of each. But then it winds up being within a dominant framework, which, you know, here it's, it's the, I mean, China doesn't even care about multiculturalism. <laughs> but if they did, they'd be like, oh, no, look, we've got, and, and, and you know what? You see it in China in the guise of economic colonialism. Uh, because what happens, uh, I lived in Beijing 2010 to 2012. We still got the homies out there. And... What's going on is China is actually investing heavily into East Africa right now. Uh, there's nations that lack infrastructure, that lack public uh, utility funds. Uh, China's investing heavily. Uh, I had several friends in China who were the children of diplomats or they were the children of government officials. And China gave them full ride scholarships to go to China, learn Chinese, get medical degrees, get whatever degrees they wanted, finish a whole undergrad, college, master's, PhD education go back to East Africa, and then now that becomes a tie. Right? So China is actually kind of doing multiculturalism, but it's just more, more overtly colonialist. But let's make no mistake, multiculturalism in America can often still be a colonizing or a white normative experience. Right? Because then what happens, uh, this is what happened actually uh, to ethnic studies. Right? So there's the Third World Liberation Front. Um, that was marching and working side by side. I mean, we're talking Yuri Pochiano, we're talking, you know, all these movements, these student movements in the 60s that were saying, we're not being taught history, we're being taught white history. We're not being taught English, we're being taught white English. We're not being taught that you get it, right? So, so what they said was, we need the presence of people of color, of queer folks, of diverse voices in these departments. What did the university do? They created queer studies departments. They created ethnic studies departments. And they're like, great, now you've got to so great. You see, that is the lie of neoliberal multiculturalism. Because what it does 
is it says you can exist as yourself, but by the way, yourself is marginalized. Right? You, oh, great, black studies, good, 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 African American studies, good, good, good. Go and sit in this department, and when we need you, we'll come find you. And oh, you're a person of color, you're a black person, you want to learn about yourself, you've got to take this whole extra other class. Right? And, and this is how uh, this colonialism happens. Vijay Prasad uh, says multiculturalism is a form of colonialism. How do we oppose it? We oppose it with what he calls polyculturalism, which is the understanding that we can access and authentically hold multiple cultural identities simultaneously. We're allowed to do that. Um, so to me, the answer would be yes. But then the question is one of mechanics, right? So, so there's two questions, right? There's the ontological question. Can this even exist? Can this even exist? Can, um, can you know, uh, I'm just, great example. Can, can a black man from Detroit move to Shanghai, live there 25 years, marry a Shanghainese woman, and can't he be, in any sense of the word, Chinese? Uh, or is he always just a black dude living in, a uh, Detroit black dude living in Shanghai, right? And then vice versa, you know, like, like any of these. So, but ontologically, because of Prashad's, I think it's Prashad or Prashad, I, I don't recall right now. You Prashad. Know? Prashad, DJ Prashad. I think that Prashad's vision of polyculturalism unlocks the ontological answer, which is to say, yes, it can happen. We can be polycultural. This category exists. Now, the question is one of mechanics, right? If it exists, but it's impossible to do, it's great. How do we do it? Uh, I don't know, but I got some ideas. Um, <laughs> let's be real. Who am I? Uh, it's got to be a road built on relationship. Like I said, you can't study your way in. You can't think your way in. It can't be... Bro, I watched a lot of these videos, and now I think I know how to act, and I know how to move, and I know the yada yada yada. Um, because reader-text relationship is very different from human-human relationship. Reader-text relationship, especially those of us who studied, who, who studied the postmodern canon, we're aware that a reader and a text will always have an imbalance in power dynamic. The text never wins out in terms of power dynamic. Um, text paired with culture can have a power dynamic that exerts itself on a reader, but a text acting uh, acting outside of a cultural context, and and when you're a reader, usually you pull the text into your context. It doesn't exert any pull. So it has to be built on relationship to human beings, right? It has to be built on uh, this thing. So this to me is kind of the roadmap. You know, everybody starts out a little bit appropriate. Like, let's be real. Why do we even, like, okay, um, I'll, I'll revise that, actually, because of the power dynamics. Um, everything starts with a push or a pull, right? So, for example, Filipinos, I'm allowed to swear, right? You're, you're recording this, but I'm allowed to swear, right? I've been swearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, <laughs> Filipinos got fucked by the West. The country got fucked by the West. And then this country has the balls to say, why are so many of you coming over? Right? So, so I, I, I actually have to revise it. I can't say that everything starts with appropriate. But everything starts with a push or a pull. You got pushed, and now you're off balance, and you've got to find something, right? Uh, so, you, you, right, I mean, this is, this is one-on-one stuff, but, you know, they ask, oh, why are you coming over? Why aren't you improving your countries? Well, because you fucking raped our countries, right? You screwed over all of the equatorial world. And now you're asking, why are immigrants flocking to America? Why are we trying so hard to get in? Well, it's because you made everywhere else your trash, right? Um, or, okay, that's, that's the military side. Um, <laughs> sometimes shit is just fun. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I don't know, you grew up watching ballet, you're like, yo, that's beautiful. I don't know nothing about ballet culture, but I'm gonna learn, right? You say, yo, I don't know anything about Japan or what them people went through, but, you know, Akira's tight, 
and like, you know, I like, like, I don't know, one piece, you know, he hit. Uh, it's cool. It's like, like I said, there's that benign ignorance. It's not a willful ignorance. It's not, oh, those immigrants, I don't know what they're going through. I don't know why they would want, you know, like, it's just a, I don't know, I don't know these people. So you start seeing from the outside, right? Whether that's an outside you're knocking at to get in, or that's an outside that you're running away from something. Um, and then hopefully it becomes an appreciation. Uh, and when it goes from appropriation to appreciation, I would say, right, appreciation is gratefulness. Appreciation becomes a two-way street. Appropriation, like, like it's cool, bro. You think like Chinese food is cool, like that? Good. All right. Like, start there. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna never criticize you for starting somewhere. But where do you grow from there, right? Do you just keep being the man to your friends? Everybody's like, oh yeah, you know, Wayne. <laughs> Wayne knows where the good Chinese food is, and oh, Wayne's telling me this about Sichuan food. Or does it become appreciation? Where you flow it back? You know what I'm saying? You actively invest in something. I don't know. The restaurant owner's kid has a GoFundMe to like do something. You know, I don't I don't know what it is. But appropriation is I see it, I'm outside, I'm looking at you, and, and I think that room is a cool room. Appreciation is like, okay, now let, let me help you tie me up the room a little bit. Let me help you, let me let me follow, let me serve. That's uh, that could be what some people term allyship. And this also, I think, by the way, is part of how we address performative allyship. Because often performative allyship lacks the component of appreciation. Uh, it objectifies and tokenizes people because it says, actually, the opposite of appreciation. You should be appreciative for me. I've got a lot of this, you know, I've got, I got the juice, and, and you look like you need a handout. Uh, I do think, by the way, that if we could foster this genuine desire to enter inside and to build inside and to take, if you appreciate a home, you're going to say thank you to the people who built it. You're not going to come in and tell them it needs redecorating. You did. So I think that appreciation, another way to talk about that, is genuine allyship rather than performativity. At some point, then, uh, it becomes apprenticeship. Again, human relationships are the bridge to, you know, when, when somebody opens that door for you. Uh, so I always think of a couple of homies in my life. Uh, my boy Yusef, who is the one who burned Deltron 3030, and uh, Aesop Rock's Labor Days and Jay Z's The Blueprint. Uh, and if it wasn't for my boy Yusef, uh, born in the Bronx, grew up in Baltimore and then Delaware with me, uh, I, wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be on this hip hop shit. If it weren't for my boy Shimo in New Haven, who I was a student in New Haven, uh, and he was working, uh, he and the homies was working in the dining hall. And we'd just like go out after his ship was done and we'd cipher. And we'd like he'd take me like around from the hill to the ville uh, in New Haven, and like he welcomed me. He showed me, you know, like and 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 there wasn't appreciation. There was a back and forth, you know. It wasn't transactional, but that's that's what people do for each other, right? We don't care about each other. We we you know we got in the studio together, did different things. It becomes apprenticeship when there's people who see you, and it's important too because apprenticeship can be pursued, but it can't be forced. It can't be taken, right? Um, Apprenticeship has to be someone saying, I want you in. You get what I'm saying? So, and, and you know, and you can be waiting around for that for a while. But, you know, it's just like the Kung Fu Masters. You go to the temple and you got to sit on the stoop for like 20 days before they even open the door, right? Like, if, if this shit is worth it, it's worth making these human connections. Um, it's worth, and human connections are messy and slow. And sometimes they backtrack. But... But we have to go from, if we're not willing to take that jump from, man, you know, I, I like going to, to Soho and, and, and buying some kicks, and oh, <laughs> I'm a book a flight to Japan and, you know, buy some cool stuff, cool stuff in the, you know, Harajuku. Uh, if, if you can't, if you can do that, but you're unwilling to be like, yo, I'm gonna go to a JACL meeting and see what's going on with the community. If you're unwilling to go to uh, BLM march and be the only Asian face there, be the only whatever on the block, then you don't really care about this. You are 
you know, you're a fan. And that's cool, man. Everybody needs fans. Like, I, you know, that's cool, man. Like, uh, we see them in, 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 uh, in LA. A lot of weaves go to Little Tokyo, and they buy a lot of cool shit, and they support mom and pops. Like, that's great. But when do you stop? And, and I actually think that tourists shouldn't be a pejorative word. Um, there's actually development experts that I've heard, uh, Africa development experts, who say what we need is more tourism. We need more tourism in Africa and less people helping. Because, like, bro, that school that you're building, that town has, like, an infrastructure problem. But, you know, they, they're like, just go after the beautiful place, enjoy it, spend money there, because guess where that money's going? To those people who go to that school, right? So I'm cool with tourists. You know, they're, they're supporting local businesses as long as they're not just going to McDonald's wherever they go, um, <laughs> which we do. But, but then if you want to jump from being an eternal tourist to being a community member, then you've got to form relationships, real relationships, right? And then last is the vaunted, the grail of authenticity, right? Existing on the inside. And anybody who exists on the inside of something knows that that means responsibility. Shit ain't fun. It's not fun to be black in America. It's not fun to be Asian in America. It's not fun to be queer in America. It's not fun, you know, like, and I mean, I, like, there's a long time, it wasn't fun to be Italian in America. I grew up in Northern Delaware. I grew up with a lot of Italians, a lot of Sicilians. Shit wasn't fun for them when their grandparents came and they were, like, chased out of places, right? Everybody knows, anybody who's on the inside of something, knows that shit comes with a burden. And authenticity, part for me, and it's not 100%, but part of authenticity is, are you willing to carry the weight? Right? Are you willing, and, 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 and you understand even what it means to carry the weight. Do you understand even what it means to exist in that space with whatever relative privilege or whatever baggage you carry in? To also take up the weight of a second culture? If you do, cool, let's, let's, let's do this, let's do this work. But if you don't, you know, don't think you can just slide in and just be another face in the crowd, because uh, it don't work like that, right? Um, so, all right, so, so for me, you know, a question then is, and, and it's an open question, how can Asian creators make work that contributes to hip-hop culture without decentralizing black and brown voices and narratives, right? Like, that's, in the end, that's the question. How do we, like, it, it's crazy, y'all, because there's multiple Asians in this room right now that make our living off of hip-hop culture. Like, multiple dudes here. Uh, of course, it's all, all cisgendered men. Um, but there's multiple people in this room that, thank Jesus Christ, or whatever God you pray to or don't, that, like, we get to be a part of this game. But at the same time, Again, you know, going back to like, if we're existing on the inside, what responsibilities do we bear? Every day, when we put on a Kangol, I don't know what Kangol is like. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every day we put on the joggers and the, I uh, don't even know, Supreme, whatever. You know, like, are we also putting on, all right, I'm moving through this world as, or already I know I'm moving through this world as a cisgender Chinese man. It's short dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, I already know that. And now that added filter of, okay, if I step out and I'm portraying myself in a certain way and I'm claiming belonging to a certain thing, am I ready to navigate through all of that? Right? I was just last night, we was at the after party and we was talking to the bouncer. We was talking about, you know, he got a six year old son, a uh, big black dude from around here. He was like, bro, sooner rather than later, there's going to be a day I got to tell my son, have the combo. Y'all know, have the police combo. I don't want to pull it over whatever combo. Are we, if we're going to exist in these spaces, are we ready and willing to participate in the combos that we wouldn't otherwise? We don't have to otherwise. You know, are we going to be ready to do that? Vice versa, for those wanting to be a part of this Asian American shit. Are y'all ready to learn about Japanese American incarceration? Are y'all ready to fight for the Vietnamese and the Hmong and the Cambodians and the Lao that are being deported? Right? It's being reported as a Latinx issue. Uh, the number one racial group in California that's undocumented is Asian Americans. Um, 
you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, if we love this crazy rich Asian shit and it's always been my maybe shit, like, are we gonna support Pep, right? Are we gonna, are we gonna opt in when we could opt out? Not even opt out now, are we gonna opt in when we could just let it pass, right? Um, and if you are, that's fine. If you're appreciated, that's cool, man. Show up, buy some tickets. But, you know, we, we need it deeper than that if we're going to move forward as humanity. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the question. Um, that, that was very, that was very uh, not dramatic. That was not good showmanship. I did not know what slide was coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> this slide that came up next was the last one. Um, but, uh, yeah, all right, what, what's time I'm looking like? We got time for some questions? And, yeah. All right, all right. Cool, cool. Yeah, so, uh, so you know, I've been talking a lot. So if y'all got any questions, I'm going to just talk for like another 20 seconds, just so, you know, y'all can gather yourselves and figure out some thoughts, work through some things, and then hopefully articulate a coherent whatever. Thank y'all for coming through. All right, I forgot. I know y'all got a jet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. Um,